Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I right in front of you. Okay. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us this morning, and welcome to Pastor Ann. And with, no, with all further ado, I'll introduce Bruce, and Bruce is one of the co-chairs of the college. Thank you, Frank. That was very quick. <laughs> I I would like to, on behalf of the call committee, welcome everybody here today. I know that we are competing against some very beautiful weather outdoors that everybody's been waiting for, so it's very commendable that you've come out and, uh, and it can be a part of the continuation of this uh, call process, and again, we thank you for that. And, Special welcome to Pastor Ann. Uh, glad to have you here. And she's been at two services already this morning and one to go. So you get a chance to get to know her a little bit uh, better in just a, a bit. Um, I've been asked to introduce the call committee. And I've got the names written down because I would not sleep well tonight if I overlook somebody here. But uh, I'm going to call each person by name here. And if they could just stand up until I've introduced everybody, and then you can be seated. But, uh, Mark Bjorko, and I'm trying to do this with a Norwegian flair to it, I'm not going to do it. That's not bad. For a sweet, yeah. Um, Dan uh, Byrne, is uh, Dan here today or not? I'm not sure if he is. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, Dara Green. Uh, Gene Jorgensen, I think, might be back in the kitchen. We have packing lunches, so anybody that wants to pick up and go help her when they have a chance can do that. We should appreciate that. Uh, Katie Carls. Uh, Julia Murphy, did I, whoops, no Julia, and Tony Shane here is over here, and then uh, Mary and Heinz and myself uh, make out the, the rest of the committee, and thank you very much. Yes, I want to, I want to make this, and I'm going to add in just a couple of uh, comments here, I don't want to speak very long because uh, I don't care to do that anyway, but uh, the, uh, the call process has been really a, an exciting process. It's been uh, just a wonderful experience. And when we first started meeting, and I think it was uh, back in October, if I'm not mistaken, I think we've been together for about seven months. And Mary and Heinz was asked to be the, uh, the chair of the committee, and she said she would do that with one condition, and that was that she had uh, somebody to kind of uh, help her as a, as a backup to quarterback the team. So I became that backup. So I want you to understand that uh, she is the Aaron Rodgers. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm the Brett Huntley or whoever that other guy is. So she's been just fantastic to work with. And, but, uh, and I also would be remiss if I didn't um, not just thank the committee, uh, Mary and I had many discussions over the course of uh, our seven months, and we just had a, a, a great committee to work with. We were blessed with uh, people that really cared, that really uh, prayerfully discerned the process, asked a lot of good questions, had great comments, and they were just a pleasure to work with. Uh, and I want to be sure to also thank Pastor Chris and Pastor Matt, I know, is, uh, is gone today at other... other uh, commitments, but uh, without their leadership and their help, uh, we would have uh, probably been flailing away a little bit. None of us had been on a call committee before, and I was kind of fascinated with that at first, and then I realized that with the longevity and the stability we have among pastors, you may not see another call committee for 20 or 30 years. <laughs> so I encourage anybody that wants to participate in that process to, to do so, because it really has been a worthwhile experience. So with that, uh, I will call on uh, the starting point. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was just way too much because <laughs> it's not true at all. Um, I, I just have to um, echo what, what Bruce said that, you know, we came together, none of us really knew each other too well, and to work together and to, to pray together and to be involved in such an important um, process for our church was just a blessing. And I think we all got to know each other and appreciate each other for um, the task that we had to do. And so it was great. It really was great. And Bruce was, we talked a lot. And so what he said is just absolutely not true. We were 
<laughs> we were working together the whole time. So um, I would just like to open us in a, in a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day with grateful hearts. We thank you for your guiding and leading in the call process for an associate pastor here at St. Matthew's. Our prayers were answered, and we give thanks for Pastor Anne. We ask a special blessing on her and on our members of this church as we take the next steps to finalize her call to serve here with us. We give all glory to you for your faithfulness to us, and we pray in the most holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I would just like to tell you a little bit about how you go about a call process. Some of you have done this, maybe uh, with in the past, but it, we kind of were learning as we went. But first thing we did was we looked at the job description. We looked at the things that we needed to um, search for in this person who would come to take uh, our pastor, our beloved Pastor Margaret's place. And we agreed that um, Pastor Margaret had a special place in our hearts and she was wonderful. But this was now a new day and we gave us an opportunity to look at the various programs and activities that we were hoping that our new pastor would be part of. And so we spent quite a bit of time looking at that. We also looked at the profile of our congregation um, and the community and all that. We had to put all that stuff together. And then the bishop came and met with us and he gave us pages and pages and pages and pages. And stuff that we were supposed to be doing and we said, yeah, okay, right, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> so we went about our work and um, then the Synod did help us and they gave us uh, three names. They put this request or this notice of this position out into various places so pastors could see that it was an opportunity and opening. And um, so there were some pastors, there were three in particular that were interested in the position and so we were given their names and Pastor Matt and Pastor Chris met with each of them separately and talked about the possible um, their possible role in our congregation. And based on their meetings with these people, they felt that all three of them would be good to go with us in this process. So we interviewed each one for approximately two hours each. And then we also called references on each of them. And then we came back together again and we looked at all of this information and we um, really prayerfully discerned the information that we had gotten and we it was a unanimous recommendation that Pastor Ann was our choice. So from there we had meetings, more meetings, always meetings. Um, we had Pastor Ann came and met with our staff and then she met with um, the council and some HR people and that brought us really to where we are today. And so we just welcome you and we're going to call on Pastor Ann, and she's going to tell you a little bit about herself. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Ann Williams, and uh, I grew up in Waukesha, Wisconsin, just um, a few miles away from here. And I, because I'm from Waukesha and from the Midwest, this is very difficult for me to stand up here and just talk about yourself. <laughs> so I'm uh, going to try and um, choose things that I think might be interesting and relevant to um, my position or hopeful position here. And uh, I guess the first thing I'd like to say is that I'm just really thankful to be here. I'm really grateful to God and to this community for welcoming me. Um, so thank you so, so much. Uh, according to the agenda, I'm supposed to tell you about my current life first. <laughs> um, currently, I'm a stay-at-home mom, which I never thought I would be. Um, but my husband is also a pastor, and pastors work a lot of nights and weekends. And so, uh, while we had very young children, it seemed to make sense that uh, one of us put them to bed at night. and. Um, <laughs> be with them. So I, uh, my husband serves a church in Waukesha, and uh, I have a daughter named Lydia, who is seven. Um, I think you'll get to meet her soon. 
She will act shy, but she is not. <laughs> and I have a son who's just turned four, and his name is Simon. And um, they're wonderful, and uh, they are part of the reason that I was very much interested in this call. Um, I think how I'll continue is to um, uh, to tell you how I found out about this particular position. Um, and that is, um, my husband and I shared a call in Thienesville, which is uh, right inside of Mequon, Wisconsin. And uh, we, we left that call when my husband accepted the call in Waukesha, and that's when I started to be a stay-at-home mom. And people would ask me, the call committee has heard this story about three times now, so you can just tune out and drink some coffee. Um, people would ask me, you know, do you, do you want to be a pastor again? Are you looking for a call? Are you going to be a stay-at-home mom for a long time? And I said, I don't know. It would have to be a really particular call, and it would have to be a call that would allow me some good time with my family. I think. You know, a halftime call would be really nice. And the part about ministry that I really like the best and the part that I think I have the most gifts for is really one-on-one -on -one pastoral care type of ministry. Um, I'm an introvert and I like to just focus on one person and listen to them deeply. And so, uh, you know, if I got to make up my own kind of ideal call, it would be a half-time call, where I got to do a whole lot of visitation and pastoral care. So I don't think those exist. <laughs> there is a call like that out there, so I don't, I don't know. And, um, and then my husband came home one day and he said, guess who wants a half-time pastor that has a lot of pastoral care? <laughs> He told me about St. Matthew's, and uh, so this was in November, and so I went to the Synod office, and I sat down with their uh, mobility person, the person who places pastors in different calls, and, um, and I said, I want this call. So I didn't put my paperwork in in a general way to kind of search for a job. I went to the Synod office and said, I want this job. And so I uh, filled out my paperwork and I submitted it, I think uh, right after Thanksgiving. And uh, that kind of uh, serendipity, I guess, uh, felt very holy to me. It felt like the work of the Spirit, that this is what I wanted and this is what gifts I have for ministry. And uh, this would allow me to pursue a vocation as a pastor and as a mother. And, um, and that here you are looking for just that. And uh, it felt very spirit led to me, which is appropriate during the season of Pentecost. Right? <laughs> and, um, but more than just a kind of convenient um, fit, uh, this, is my, this is my vocation. And um, it has taken me a long time to come to terms with that. I uh, didn't want to be a pastor for a long time. Um, so, once I accepted that and once I uh, realized that this is what I love to do, uh, it felt very holy to me. And so I'm so glad that it worked out in this way. Um, and other past ministry experience. When I graduated, uh, I worked at camp. I was like a crazy camp counselor person, so I have that experience. And after I graduated from seminary, I was a campus pastor at um, a Jesuit university in Denver. So they, they had lots of priests on staff, but no pastors for their non-Catholic students. So 
So I was the pastor to all the all the non-Catholic people, including the Buddhists. <laughs> so um, I did that, and then I uh, worked in Deansville, and then um, took some time away from ministry. Although I would argue that time home with my children uh, has produced some of the deepest theological thinking. <laughs> Sin is real, people. Sin is real. And, um, and, and here I am. And is there, what do you think? Is this a good comment about myself? Can I be done? <laughs> Aaron, you're in charge. For questions. I get the screen, you get the questions. Okay, does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask? Are you going to preach? Yes, I will preach. I think about once a month is what the job description details. So, um, I, I think you have a copy of the, maybe not, the draft description? Yeah. yeah. So the idea was um, three Sundays out of the four here at St. Matthew's, one Sunday of preaching, and then two of helping with liturgy and such. Chris, do you want to just um, say some of the other areas? Sure. Um, did everybody get a sheet? Hopefully you did. If you didn't, we have a few more over there. Um, we, we gave you the bio that you got in the mail as well, but just to remind people. But the job description, as we talked about, as we put together, you know, what would really help us at St. Matthew's. Um, Halftime call, and then, like I just said, um, preaching and worship takes up about a quarter of the time. Um, so that's Sunday mornings, three of three Sundays a month, um, one of those being for preaching. Um, second major part is, um, Pastor Andrew said, is pastoral care. So it's um, doing our visitation ministry and um, also something we're trying to kind of work towards um, with Sue Swing is kind of the Stevens ministry idea, which is, um, which is really a ministry that focuses on how do you walk with people that are going through great struggles in their life. Um, there's a whole program that, we, that we're yet to get into, but it, it um, trains people in, in walking with people. So how do you listen? How do you... How do, you, how do you say the right things at those difficult times and not um, all the good bloopers? Um, so um, that's a part of it, but a, a majority of this would be towards visitation ministry, as, as she said. Um, the other part was, uh, is a kind of specialized area, which is women's ministry, um, helping out with ministry. Sue is doing uh, the, the lion's share of that right now, but working with her and working with the women's ministry committee towards the various activities that go on. Um, and, um, you know, we wanted to leave a little bit of room for what kind of gifts would the pastor bring. So allowing her to insert her gifts and skills as to what she would like to do. Um, the last part is the inevitable administration piece. There's always a little bit of administration no matter what you, how much you try to get rid of it. There's always a voice article to write or a, question to answer about this or that, and then um, staff meetings, which would be the other part. We'll only have her go to probably about one in every three or four council meetings, um, unless she really wants to come. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're wonderful. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> Until you hit number 400, then they all get up. <laughs> After 400, they're just, they're just long. But um, so a little bit of a little bit of um, uh, those as well. So I think that's really any questions about the job description? Well, you know, one thing I would emphasize with it is, um, you know, I think a lot of us have a vision about what this will look like based on what Margaret did, and I think we need to get rid of that vision. Because um, when Margaret came, she, uh, you know, her kids were out of the house. She was wanting to move into a new career. She was really excited for ministry and really excited about bringing all sorts of stuff. 
And um, one of the things she didn't bring was boundaries. <laughs> um, and that was wonderful for us because she was in everything. But um, that's really not a half-time ministry. You know, that's, that's, you know, she lived it out more in a full-time way. So I think it's really important for us to be clear that, you know, this will not look like Margaret's ministry. And Anne has many different gifts, gifts and skills, too. So they're not the same people. Um, things will be lived out in a different way. Uh, care for creation is not a part of this. So that's really important to know. Um, we've moved that into the social ministry committee side of things, and they're handling it. Um, so different things like that. Um, probably not a lot of weddings unless it's, you know, both Matt and I are gone, for example. Um, that would be a time where we need some help, and we've worked that out with, with Ann. Um, um, funerals would be something because you naturally work with a lot of people that are, that are in that demographic. So that could be something that they would want to pastor Ann because she's been their pastor for a while. So, um, and not to say that Matt and I won't be doing visitation ministry, um, but the lion's share will go to, to Anne in that regard. So, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's important to say. Question about uh, congregational membership, where you stay with your husband's congregation as part of membership, have an associate membership with this falls into the questions that we've never thought about. Leave it to a pastor to think about it. It's a lot of, I don't know. We're getting a, a, a team here so that her husband will... Are we going to make Jay join our team? <laughs> I like that. That's, I think you should ask him. <laughs> I bet this congregation would be too excited about it. <laughs> I um I hadn't thought about that. I'm not a member at my husband's church. I wanted to um uh, I wanted to how how do I want to say this? <laughs> No, it, it's a lovely con congregation, don't get me wrong, that's not it. It's that I wanted to model a different way of being the pastor's wife, which was <laughs> not taking part in votes and other kind of things like that. I kind of wanted to stay out of that. Um, <laughs> and um, so I would, I would be happy to be a member here. I... Uh, I don't know if the pastors here vote. Sometimes pastors, even in council decisions, are only the tiebreaker. I don't know if that's your tradition here or not. So um, I'd be open to figuring that out. Yeah, our constitution says we can vote in council meetings, but we choose not to. Um, so we try not to uh, sway votes. So I personally don't vote, but. We can vote. We're not a tiebreaker. Yeah. What about your uh, your family, your, your children? Do they vote? <laughs> <laughs> Are you asking where their church membership will be? Yeah. Well, they're quite young, so they don't get to be members anywhere until after they're confirmed. Um, uh, I haven't figured out all the logistical details of how this is going to work. Um, that's the part about this opportunity that is the most unsettling to me uh, because I would like to sit with my kids in worship. That sounds pretty great, right? And um, we are much closer to my husband's <coughs> church than we are uh, to this church. My parents live in Waukesha, so they've said that maybe they would take them to their church and they're Presbyterian, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so we, have, we haven't worked all of that out. Uh, if, I am, if the vote passes, they'll be here on the 12th for my installation, and then maybe you can decide whether you want to. <laughs> For a long time, you were not sure that you wanted to become a pastor. Mm -hmm. 
Can you give us one or two <laughs> events that occurred in your life that caused you to decide this is the career you wanted to pursue? Yes. Um, I knew somebody was going to call me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think for a long time I didn't want to be a pastor because I didn't see in myself uh, a lot of the things that I saw in other pastors, which was a very, and I don't think this is necessarily true, but this is this was my perception, this is what I saw. So a very uh, concrete and um, unflinching faith, which is something I didn't always feel. So I didn't think I was pastor material. Um, a real willingness to um, be up front and to speak a lot. Um, and that, that kind of uh, gregarious or kind of extroverted um, behavior. And when I grew up, all the pastors that I saw, the pastor at the, my home Presbyterian church in Waukesha, were big Swedish men. <laughs> and I, I never saw myself in, in that. It's a big and so, um, <laughs> Reverend Nelson um, was his name. Uh, so I, I never really saw myself in them and thought that I didn't necess necessarily have uh, what it takes to be a pastor. And so um, I think what changed that for me and helped me accept uh, this vocation and this call um, was doing pastoral work. Like the, the doing of it helped me feel more comfortable. Um, so I began seminary uh, thinking, because I majored in religion, and there aren't too many jobs out there for religion <laughs> majors, bachelor's degree in religion. And so I went to seminary and I thought, I'm just going to take some classes and, and I'll figure out what I'm going to do. So I took some classes for a year, and then I said, I'm just going to take another year of classes, because then I can get a master's degree, like an MA, and then I'll have, you know, a piece of paper, a degree to show for all of this work that I've done. And then and then I did two years, and then I thought, well, maybe I should actually do this instead of just study it in a classroom and see how that goes. And so I was um, uh, a chaplain. All pastors have to do something called CPE, which is Clinical Pastoral Education. It's basically like they throw you in the deep end and see if you can swim. And my deep end was um, a hospital in uh, Chicago, a uh, Northwestern hospital, actually, working with women who um, had lost their babies during childbirth or who were having to, um, or being told that their kids had crazy genetic diseases. So that was my deep end and um, yeah and uh, and that's when I realized that pastoral work could look like sitting with someone in deep grief and not saying a word I didn't know that that's what pastors did you know I thought pastors preached long sermons and were kind of boring and <laughs> 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 and, you know, I didn't know that, um, I didn't know that being a pastor could look like going to the NICU in the middle of the night and praying over a baby that was dying. Just me and this tiny little helpless baby. You know, I, and, um, so seeing that side of ministry um, was so hard and so difficult and um, I had nightmares about that for a long time, I'll be honest. And, uh, but there was something about that that uh, resonated deeply with me 
and sitting next to people's bedsides. And, um, you know, I go in and they've never met me before. And all of a sudden they start telling me a story from their life. And you, you don't know what a gift it is to receive a piece of someone's story like that. You know, to, to sit with them and have them tell you anything about their life, but especially when it's something really heartfelt, even difficult. Um, it feels like the most amazing privilege and honor in the whole world. And I wanted more of that. You know, I, I just eat that up. Getting to know something that's real about a person. I can do like the coffee hour chit chat. You know, how are you? Did the Packers win? It's a beautiful day. Are you going up north? Like I can do that stuff. But I really love, it feels like real living to be with someone when they're real. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's clear, but um, yeah. Pastor Ann, I wonder if you realize that you have just told us something that is, how can I put this, a very important part of the ministry that we should offer here in this church. Because we had hundreds of those girls who up until very recently had never seen a female pastor. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be happy to stand up there in my robe and be the, <laughs> <laughs> be the female pastor, sure. I think that, um, oh, okay, we'll take one more question because, and then we'll just have a little informal, we'll have a prayer and informal for you to come and meet so we can get ready for the... 11 o'clock service. Okay, I, I just wondered, since you were raised Presbyterian, how did you end up being a Lutheran? Yeah. Okay. I was. I was raised, uh, uh, the question was, you were raised Presbyterian, how did you end up a Lutheran pastor? Which is a good question. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to study when I went to college, um, so I thought that the best way to choose where all of that money of my parents was going to go um, was to choose a place where I could do something that I really loved to do. And so I said, I love to sing. I'm going to go to Luther College. So, <laughs> so, I, so I went to Luther College, and, um, and I, I already confessed this to the call committee, but I never went to church when I was there. <laughs> um, I went to all the religion classes, though. Uh, but I never went to church. And I um, finally, near the end of my senior year, uh, the campus pastor there, who was also a woman, she said to me, well, when are you, when are you gonna preach? Because the seniors get to preach in chapel at the daily chapel. They still have daily chapel at Luther College. And uh, she said, well, when are you going to preach? And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm not going to preach. And um, so I, I reluctantly agreed, and I started going to church. And there was something about the liturgy that I really loved that doesn't always happen in the Presbyterian church. And I went to a really uh, low church Presbyterian church. And so... Um, I was kind of, uh, it's not, it wasn't so high church that there were like Episcopalian smells and bells, but it was, uh, <laughs> but I loved the movement of the liturgy. And what I really, what really hooked me into Lutheranism <laughs> beyond like the theology of Martin Luther, who's just so great, but what really hooked me into it was that the center of the worship service was the Eucharist. So that the most important thing that we do on Sunday is a mystery. You know, it's, so in the Presbyterian Church, the center of the service uh, is the word, is the, is the sermon preached by the pastor. And if he doesn't do a good job, that's that's all you've got. Now I have a Presbyterian colleagues who would disagree with me on this and say that really their, their center of their worship is also communion. So, but this is how I felt about it. Um, 
So I was hooked in by the fact that the most important thing we do together as Christian people can't be explained, can't, is, is a mystery. And that felt more natural to me, and it uh, tugged on all of the right heart strings of a person who really struggled with the doctrine of the church, right? So if you struggle with uh, what you're supposed to believe, it's a comforting thing to just take part in a mystery. And so that's how I, uh, the liturgy, the Eucharist, kind of drew me in. And I met a really cute Lutheran. <laughs> And we got married, and we had to go to church together. So. But the better answer is the Eucharist. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes. thank you so much. And And don't forget to come and vote on uh, June 5th, right. so we can make this official. That's right. I'd, um, I'd like to, before I forget, uh, say a big thank you to our call committee, too. They worked really hard. <laughs> um, any other questions just about the process or anything in that regard or the position? Well, um, why don't we conclude with uh, a word of prayer, and as Marianne said, just a reminder to join us in two weeks on June 5th for um, our congregational meeting at that time. All right? Let's pray. Dear great and gracious God, thank you so much for this time as, as your family here at St. Matthew's. Uh, we thank you for the blessing over this past year as we've uh, moved toward uh, this day and moved towards um, calling a new pastor and calling Pastor Ann here at St. Matthew's. I ask that you continue to bless us as we move into the future. And uh, I'm just so thankful for all that you do in and through us. And so we give you the thanks this day and lift up your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone.